What do Mike Tyson, apartment buildings, and a game of Monopoly have to do with market volatility? Well, here's a hint. It's about navigating a challenging landscape. Is generating income alone enough in the world right now? What do you do when your plan needs a bit of a pivot? And how can you prepare for the long run? We're going to talk about that right now in a conversation well worth your 10 minutes here on UBS Trending. All right, good day once again, everybody. It's Anthony Pastore. Welcome to another episode of UBS Trending. I'm looking forward to getting into this conversation today. You can't start a show mentioning Mike Tyson's name and not look forward to talking about what that means in the context of the markets in your portfolio. I'm joined today by two terrific partners from Bristol Gate Capital Partners, Izet Elmazi and Puria Ferdowsi. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. Uh, it's a great topic, and I know we're going to talk about what that Mike Tyson reference means. But let me start here, because a lot of our viewers know, we've been talking about this quite a bit, that there is a lot of noise happening in the markets right now. We've had the Fed certainly coming out and speaking. We just had a recent rate hike. There's uh, a lot of volatility. The markets are, you know, just kind of figuring out what's going on with the, the regional banking issue that we've had the last couple of weeks. Plus, uh, you know, we're still looking at inflation as a, as a huge a story and it's affecting investors and people going to the grocery stores and buying bread. So what, how, do, how do we navigate this landscape? What, what are we looking at here? It's, it's absolutely a difficult environment. And, you know, we haven't had a credit cycle since the global financial crisis and it looks like things from a macro perspective are deteriorating. And so, you know, Mike Tyson had a great line. Everybody's got a plan until they're punched in the mouth. And so I think the way you deal with this environment is to have a plan that assumes you're punched in the mouth over its horizon. You know, you need a plan to set up a focus on a goal and you need a way that you believe in to get you there. Because times like these tend to shake people out of the markets and that's costly from their long-term wealth perspective. That's right. Yeah, I, I love that Mike Tyson quote and it fits so many incredible um, narratives, especially this one, because as we're talking about here, it is a little scary to look at your portfolio every single day when there is so much fluctuation and volatility in the market. So we always say it's time in the market and not timing the market. And I know you all say that as well. Talk a little bit about what that means in the context of what's happening right now. Sure. Uh, if you look at investors' returns and their behavior, they tend to be their worst enemies over time. Mm -hmm and they exit the market at times like these. That's the cost of human emotion. There is a significant cost to leaving the market because you have to be right two times. You have to be right on the way out and you have to be right on the way in. And so what we try to do is focus on something that we think matters, which is the income that your assets produce. And so we focus on that income growth over time. Yeah, so uh, whenever we look at the total return, essentially, the very first thing comes to our mind that there are two components contributing towards that. The first one is price appreciation, of course, and the second one is the dividend that we uh, collect through the investment. And if we can reinvest that dividend, that would be great. Uh, and, you know, we can, we can use it in the uh, real estate analogy. Uh, I'm happy to elaborate on that side. But by focusing on the real estate side, we can tolerate these fluctuations on, the, uh, on these price return mm -hmm. with such an analogy on the income that it generates for us. Right. And it's interesting just to kind of go back. And I, I, of course, I want to talk about that real estate uh, analogy as well, because we, you know, it all equates to basically a game of monopoly here, which everybody can relate to. But you know, it's interesting because we we use the word pivot quite a lot. Um, they're talking about well, the Fed pivot. Fine, we we wonder if they will pivot this year. But for an investor pivot, you know, you have to always be ready. Back to that Mike Tyson quote: to be ready for whatever could happen. You you know, they always say, you know, you plan and God laughs, and that's one of those kind of expressions where you you can plan as much as you want, but if th things change, you have to learn how to how to pivot, and uh, and that's always really important. When you're looking at a portfolio and obviously working with an advisor is one way to manage that and have some you know security in your own portfolio absolutely i think that there's a lot of value in working with an advisor and, and part of that value is them reminding you of the plan reminding you of your objectives and keeping you involved when you want to leave 
Right. Or when you think you're afraid of what's about to happen. That's right, because it's interesting. We have a chart that we can pull up here that shows um, if you missed some short-term rallies along the way since 1960. Every t if, if you sold every time the market went down 2%, and we'll use the S&P 500 as an example, um, you would have missed significant gains if you had just stayed in the market. And so that chart really does depict so much of what it means to just kind of stay in it, working with that FA. But then that kind of goes back, Puryo, to what we were talking about with these growth drivers. So talk about that a little bit, too, because yeah. I think that's an important aspect of a client's portfolio. Yeah, so uh, getting, getting back to this uh, real estate analogy, and then uh, I'm happy to uh, talk about the drivers of this growth on the income. Uh, so assume that the, uh, th there is a building that we uh, own part of it, just a couple of uh, a few units that we own there, and we have some uh, basically tenants living in those uh, units. If we know that those tenants can survive the rate, uh, the uh, the rent hike, you know, it would be great for us. We are going to generate some some income through the investment that we have on this building. But at the same time, when we generate this income, if we can reinvest it back into the uh, apartment building, that would be great. However, we know that the price of the building goes up too. Mm -hmm. Now, the income that we are collecting through, through these rents, they may lose their power uh, of purchase, essentially. However, if the tenants can increase the, the rent that they are paying, we can still keep the purchasing power of those units. We increase the unit of the share, basically the shares of the building that we own, and eventually through time we can uh, we can own more of this uh, building. Now the drivers of uh, this growth essentially the, the uh, purchasing power that we can gain is uh, mainly the drivers of dividend growth on the uh, on our uh, companies that we are looking at. Right. Uh, that we can we can consider the last time that they grow their dividend is something that's very important. The amount of uh, basically uh, cash that distribute to the to the investors is another thing that uh, has lots of value in it and has uh, prediction potential essentially. I was when you were talking about the rent. I mean, you talk to anybody who lives in New York City and they're getting like 40, 50 percent rent increases. I don't think they're thinking the long term picture of how it all benefits everybody once they start paying higher rent. But in but in your scenario, it does make sense as an investor if you're looking at the whole company. Company, as prices go up, you're looking at the opportunities there for what it means in the long run. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, the, uh, the, more, the more income that we can generate for us and we get it back reinvested to the company itself, we are going to increase the number of shares that we have and eventually down the road we are going to generate more total return for, uh, for the investment. That right. Have. And so what would your advice be to investors right now in this period of volatility where I think it's probably going to be like this for some time? You know, stay the course? I th well, it's going to be choppy markets. And so you have to find the course you believe in. You right. have to find the destination you believe in. And, and for people like us, I think, you know, one of the things that we focus on is what, how much is our income going to grow next year? Where can we find the type of dividend growth that not only preserves our purchasing power, but actually expands it by growing faster than inflation? And so focusing on that income growth as opposed to the roller coaster ride of prices keeps us involved. It keeps us focused on what we think ultimately matters, which is how much income will we have three, four, five years down the road. Right. And take the emotion out of it. Take the emotion yeah, out of it. Yeah, because that's, I mean, that's very, very clear. As I said, my dad will call me and say, oh my gosh, my portfolio is up today. It was down tomorrow. It's up today. It's, you know, 5% yesterday. I'm like, dad, just look at it at the end of the month. You're going to you're gonna be fine. So, you know, he's invested for the long term as well. Absolutely. So just take the emotion out of it. And, and don't look at your account every day. Do not look at your account every day. <laughs> you, know, you can look at your dividend checks every day. That's a nice thing to do, <laughs> <Yeah>. right. <laughs> Because those shouldn't fall and shouldn't fluctuate as much as the market. And you just focus on that income, and that'll keep you involved. Because as you said earlier, it's time in the market. So the longer you can stay in, the better your outcome will be. Terrific. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for being terrific partners to UBS as emerging managers on our platform. Uh, it's nice to have you in such a unique position. So thank you for joining me today on the show. Puriya and Izzet, great to see you. Let's come back again. You always have great stories to tell. Good to be with both of you. Thank, thank you, you, Anthony. Of course. You. And there's lots more information for, uh, on our website. You can visit UBS.com forward slash views. That's our insights page. And you can follow us on our newly relaunched UBS Trending Instagram channel where there's lots of content, lots of sound bites, and other information there for you to digest. And as we have said, make sure if you have any questions, speak with your financial advisor. Until next time, I'm Anthony Pastore. Have a great day, everybody. And remember to keep your eyes on what's trending. We'll see you soon.